Hello there folks, welcome back to another video and in a way this is the first part of my journey into the decade of the 1980s where pretty much I'm going from 1980 to 1989 alphabetical order to see as many films as I can from that decade and the first film that popped up alphabetical for the year 1980 was this film called Agency uh, that I'm talking about right now and of course <laughs> I had to start with a rant why not but the next film is airplane which I do enjoy so but yeah from 1980 to 1989 start off the first year of course 1980 and alphabetical the letter A might as well be for asshole because that's what I feel like watching this and the thing is it's not the worst film of all time it's just very dull agency which there's another title called Mind Games. That's the, I guess, a title that's been on some of the VHS tapes for this flick. It stars Lee Majors, which is funny because on IMDb there's a picture of a DVD of Lee Majors who's clean shaven, but in this movie he's not clean shaven. In fact, he kind of looks like uh, James Brolin from the Amityville Horror. <laughs> he's got the beard, he's got the mustache. And, of course, Lee Majors, he's been on the Six Million Dollar Man TV show. I always remember him from that little part in Scrooged, where they play the commercial for the movie, The Night the Reindeer Die, where he's shooting and protecting Santa Claus. I wish it was that movie that I'm watching made it to a movie. Agency, it's a Canadian film that I swear, for some reason, I thought this was a made-for-TV flick. Because that's what it feels like. And the problem with this film is just extremely dull. It's dull. It's boring. It has low production values. Not much happens. It's directed by a guy named George Cassander. Send your ass home, please. Who has directed quite a few TV movies. And TV shows. I mean, just looking at this. Short documentary, short documentary, a short film, a short film. Episodes of some show called Night Heat, Falcon Crest. Actually, three episodes of Freddy's Nightmares, weirdly enough. Three episodes of Tour of Duty, which I remember that show. That's the Vietnam TV show that, that sometimes had the opening with that song, Painted Black. And TV movies, Devil's Food, a TV movie. And on IMDb it says this is part sci-fi, but not really. I mean, unless you think... It depends, I guess, if you think subliminal messages are not real, which a lot of people think, oh, yeah, they're not real. But if you do think they're real, if you're one of those people who do think that is a real thing, I guess um, this is your movie. It also has Robert Mitchum, has Valerie Perrine. That's the girl who is Miss Tash... Tashmacher and the early Superman movies. Miss Tashmacher. And really what this film is, if you want to see this done better, a year later, in 1981, there'd be this film called Looker with Albert Finney, which also dealt with advertising and certain things going on. That felt more like a sci-fi movie in a good way. And it was just much more of an entertaining, interesting flick. Granted, I'm not a big fan of Albert Finney. I would say he's okay, but I'm a f I am think Lee Majors did fine in this role. But Lee Majors can't do much to save this, save this movie. And just the production values, the way it's shot, it looks straight out of a TV movie, point and shoot. The music at times is very overbearing. What's sad is that the best part of this movie is probably the opening and I say the best part because it's this building and you have quick cuts to legs and masked figure painting and people are half naked dancing with bondage on and then you hear this song if anyone saw Staying Alive that John Travolta film that Sylvester Stallone directed and the finale was like that infernal hell thing imagine that set and some of those costumes but they're singing it's a fake commercial for the film, and they're singing about deodorant. 
There's a no sweat, no sweat. No sweat, no sweat, no sweat, no sweat, no sweat, no sweat. I, I was I turned out but chuckle. And it's for a deodorant named No Sweat. No sweat, no sweat. No sweat, no sweat, no sweat. I don't put the link. Someone obviously agrees with me because they put the link to that just that scene down below. And it's it's funny to laugh at, but unfortunately that is the best part of the movie. Because and also the way you realize there's a bunch bunch of ad executives watching it, and then Robert Mitchum looks at it and goes, perfect. <laughs> if that's perfect. It's called No Sweat. That'd be like, this is called Ice Cold. Or this is called, I mean, this is called Drink It. Drink it, drink it. Drink it, drink it, drink it, drink it. Drink it. Ice cold, ice cold, da na na na. Ice cold, ice cold, da na na na. Because the rest of the film is just Lee Majors as part of this ad agency. Like I say, he's got a beard, mustache. His girlfriend is Miss Teschmacher herself, Valerie Perrine. Perrine. And this ad agency he works at has been bought over by this millionaire guy played by Robert Mitchum. And pretty much a lot of people who've been working there have been fired or they've been forced to quit. And you have his buddy, which really enough, I mean, he's got the big afro hair. He's got, his name is Goldstein. And yes, he's Jewish. Because when they go to a church, he puts on one of those little things. I mean, isn't that what the stereotypical thing of being Jewish is? That your name's Goldstein. You have the, what they call, what they call it? A Jew afro? This is what I've heard. Your name Goldstein. And he just happens to be Jewish. <laughs> I'm like, it was really surreal. And like, they're going in the ad agency and there's all these people trying out for advertisements like there's a bikini, bikini girl with a cheetah there's like a little kid smoking in an elevator and there's like a snotty kid trying to talk to his secretary <clears throat> and the film sounds crazier than it is but pretty much all these people have been getting fired and Robert Mitchum again he's a millionaire guy who's bought the ad agency and his buddy Goldstein is paranoid doesn't like this new guy, Robert Mitchum. And Robert Mitchum is bringing his own people in. And pretty much you find out that Robert Mitchum's character worked in Washington. And the reason he bought this ad agency is because he's going to put subliminal messages. First in this one state, Arizona. I think under the no sweat, uh, no sweat commercial to make people choose who to vote. Vote this guy, not this guy. And then, then they'll have the power to do that for whatever, politics and so forth. <clears throat> Lee Majors is, is told about this new ad called Chocolate Planet for kids. He tosses them, he's at, asking questions, what's going on? And at times this film has awkward cuts. Like Robert Mitchum's talking to Lee Major saying, you know, I'm thinking of you for, uh, for upper management. And then it cuts as if there's more to the scene. <clears throat> or as if, wait a minute, Lee Major was just asking you stuff and he, Robert Mitchum just mentions, oh, how about maybe upper management? And then just cuts to a different scene. It just... Sometimes there's these awkward cuts, which I'll get into, which I found very strange. <clears throat> but, of course, in the film, they have to bring up what subliminal message is. So Valor Perrine is talking about it, and Lee Major's talking about, oh, yeah, there's subliminal messages in a lot of places. For example, you look at this ad for Scotch. You see this? If you look closely, there are pictures of a skull and a death mask. And see, it registers unconsciously. 
that's how you registered unconsciously and those are for you know people who are depressed or people who be willing to drink scotch because they're sad and they're like <clears throat> fuck man it sounds like you're doing worse than what fucking Robert Mitchum is doing but this film the reason I say it's dull and boring is because pretty much what I've said is the first 30 minutes of this 90 minute movie just his buddy Goldstein being paranoid. They go to church because someone has died of a heart attack. He's Goldstein is paranoid some more. Wants to talk with Lee Majors. Lee Majors says I'm too busy. <clears throat> Goldstein says I need you to listen to something at his apartment. And then the next day his buddy's gone. He goes to his buddy's apartment and finds his buddy and Goldstein, all we know is that he's Jewish, because his name's Goldstein, he's got the little hat on when going to church, and he loves his cat. He loves his cat, because when we see him enter his apartment with Lee Majors, this this guy's ready to fuck his cat. Ooh, princess, ooh, boo-boo, oh, you like cream, huh? I'm like, are you talking about the cream in the fridge or the cream in your pants? Which one are you going to feed your cat princess? Which later on, the two thing is, oh, I found out Princess is not, Princess is a male. So who knows, maybe Goldstein knew that, and maybe he wants cream from the cat. I'm going too much information. But Lee Majors finds his buddy in the fridge, suicide. Which I think, isn't that a strange way for anyone to commit suicide? But yeah, people pretty much buy it. There's a note, oh, I wanted to suffocate myself because I got fired and I couldn't live with myself. And then I'm thinking, really? It's just weird. I mean, is it there other? I don't know, just weird that the decision the bad guys made for suicide is to stuff him in the refrigerator. Uh, I just I just found that strange. I don't know why. I don't know why. It was like really. Maybe you heard about the original. Wasn't there? Um. I don't know. Maybe maybe he foresaw Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull and wanted to do some shit. But no, of course he didn't commit suicide, and instead he was murdered. Because of this tape recorder, which Lee Majors grabs, listens to with Valerie Perrine, and you get the idea that something was going on. And this one, that's another example of the awkward editing in this film. Like, Lee Majors and Valerie Perrine listen to this tape recorder, and then as it listens to the tape recorder, it cuts to the buddy Goldstein talking when he had recorded it. And then at times, like, out of the blue, cuts to, here's three seconds of an airplane arriving. Then it cuts to Goldstein talking to the tape recorder. Then it cuts to Robert, to, uh, Lee Majors and Valerie listening. And then it'll cut back to the airplane for another three seconds. Then there's Robert Mitchum. Then it cuts back to Goldstein talking. Then it cuts back to Lee Majors and them listening. Then it cuts back to Robert Mitchum with a gun. I'm like, where the fuck is he? He's got a gun? I literally thought he had a gun. He was going up to Goldstein's apartment. And then I'm like, wait a minute. If the guy died of suicide, it's not from gunshot. And it's this awkward cutting until... I, yeah, I guess I was confused if that's what you wanted me to do, director. And no, it's Robert Mitchum coming up and scaring Lee Majors and Val Perrine. What are you guys doing? And then Lee Majors have come up with this excuse that they were fooling around and they get the fuck out of there. And that's where Lee Majors looked into it. Like these ads that were bought in one state, one state only, and it was during a time where there was voters for the Senate. Lee Majors gets arrested. These bad guys tried to get Valerie, Valerie in the tape, but she fakes being pregnant. And having to, like, oh, I'm pregnant, I'm gonna have a baby, and the public and people scare the bad, two bad guys off. She goes back to her place, the two guys get her, and they chloroform her. 
And this part got really confusing. I forget if she duplicated the tape, she hid it, and then the bad guys only took the tape without realizing there was a duplicate. Because they don't kill Valerie. Lee May just tosses the cop, they go back to his apartment, there's Valerie, and he's talking about, oh man, they, they did this and did that. So they chloroform her, they, but they didn't kill her. I guess to make her look crazy, or make her look insane. And then the cops see the tape. And the reason I got confused is, I never saw a scene with the cops listening to the tape. It's just the next thing, oh, Lee Majors, you're out on bail. And I don't even remember like who posted his bail. It was like a $75,000 bail, and he even said he didn't have the money for it. I'm like, did the bad guys do it? Why? Just keep him in jail. I mean, did the cops let him out for bail? I mean, there, I swear, this is like wishy-washy. I swear there's shit missing. I swear there's shit missing in this film. I swear to God. And of course, really enough, the guy he's sharing the cell with, or at least across the way talking, happens to be a safe cracker. So that Lee Majors, Valerie, and the safe cracker, they go into the apartment, to the place where Robert Mitchum's at, put the safe, open it, then they gotta leave, and Lee Majors gets his tie stuck. And really, the safe cracker is there, and he disappears. So that at the end of the film, Robert, uh, Lee Majors can go up and craft the safe himself. Because he wrote down the shit, I guess. I don't even remember him writing the shit down. I'm like, why would he write the thing down? Did he expect to go back there again? I'm not talking about, oh, reading the script. Yeah, I gotta come back. Let me write these numbers down. I mean, I don't even remember that, but... Of course, I will admit, I was kind of dozing off in and out of the movie. Because nothing happens! There's a lot of talking, there's no chases, there's no special fets, it's not much intrigue, it's not much of an, could be an interesting plot, but watch Looker, or hell, watch They Live, if you want to see that kind of plot. And the bad guys seem so fucking inept and stupid. Because... Lee Majors is taken to the ad meeting. He's not fired. They still have him on staff. He's taken with a bunch of other people down to this sort of lodge. And I'm like, why wouldn't they fire him? Or why wouldn't they like try to bump him off sooner? No, they're doing this. And then this, again, this awkward cut. That's why it gets confusing. This one girl is trying to seduce him. She sits on the bed. Lee Major's looking at her. And then it cuts. And then he's in bed with no shirt on. Wakes up. And we never know. Did he sleep with the girl? Didn't look like he was going to sleep with the girl. And he's with the Valerie girl. You know, Miss Teschmacher. What's going on? I have no fucking idea. She just seems like an awkward cut. Even when he's looking out the window at one point, it's an awkward cut. Even the music. It's like, da-da-da. Cut. And it's like, wait a minute. It's like, a few seconds just got cut out. Literally, if, if I took this video, and I'm talking, and I'm talking, and all of a sudden I'm over here, Like, hey, this is the can of Mellow Yellow that I'm drink. Hmm, where is that guy at? What's going on? If there was an edit there, you'd be like, what the fuck? That's what I'm talking about. Doesn't that happen all the time, but once while I was like, what? Especially in that scene. And then these two guys pick him up. And he's like, one of us is going to commit suicide. And Lee Major is like, I guess it's not one of you two, huh? And what's weird is he's in the back. These two guys have just said they, they're going to kill him. There is no... He realizes the doors are locked. But, one, there's no window in between. So I'm thinking, why doesn't he just come up and strangle, hit, punch, 
do anything, take the shoe off and slam into his face. Two, these bikers show up and he can roll the fucking window down. How about Nakama roll the window down and do something? But no, he he gives. I did like I like Lee Majors. He does the best they can. He's giving the middle finger to the bikers, pissing them off so that they fucked up the car, fucked up the two guys. He's driving. And then what's weird is during this, like, one of the two bits of action, it's not even the two guys who try to kill him that's on top. It's one of the bikers trying to hit the windshield in which he moves the car so that the guy hits a tree and then Lee Majors drives out of there. <laughs> he goes back to the agency, he opens the safe, he watches the tapes, and they're fucking laughable. Because they're very overbearing. It's like the senator that the, you don't want to vote. And then like weird lightning noise. And no! No! And then this weird animation. Almost as if it was 70s animation. Pouring down. And and uh, no! No! Lightning. and This animation that's the face. This kind of like a death mask. Of, I'm selling it more than I should. Robert Mitchum comes in, brings him to the basement, shows everything. I guess because he loves James Bond, and James Bond villains usually do that. And says that this chocolate thing, there's no message on it now, but it's like a, a, a gun that's not loaded. And, you know, messages for children next. I have such hopes for you, I guess. I mean, Robert Mitchum's not bad. Lee Majors tries to do the best that he can, but... The second bit of action is those two same guys that tried to kill him before. He doesn't even fight them off. It's the, the security guard with a bat. Who's always, his one line is, you need to sign in. You need to sign in. Hits a couple with a baseball bat. Uh, Lee Majors runs, didn't shot at, runs over here, didn't shot at, hits one with the phone, runs, gets shot at. And literally, the guy with the baseball bat is the guy who knocks both of them out. <laughs> Ron Mitchum has a gun. The cops and Miss Teschmacher are there. One of the bad guys shoots Robert Mitchum, so I guess he won't give away his own bosses of higher power. And so that woman who tried to seduce Lee Majors before and then disappeared... is on a plane with another guy who I don't know who the fuck he is, but I guess he's a higher up boss of Robert Mitchum. They're still out there, and they're going to do some shit, but oh well. Lee Majors is with Miss Teschmacher, and they have some cute chit-chat dialogue about, hey, you want to go to the ballet? And, hey, yeah, the cat that uh, I adopted since my buddy died. Yeah, it's not a she, it's a he. And then you get some really shitty, overbearing music that, again, makes me think of an 80s, 80s TV movie. Actually, that's an insult to TV movies because Duel is a TV movie from the 70s, and Duel is a great movie. But yeah, I didn't expect this to go 23 minutes long, but it was it's one of those movies that it just it's hard to explain. It's not hard to explain, but I think with confusing, awkward editing at times, a very dull, slow, sluggish pace, uh, not eventful in the slightest. If you're looking for any type of action, you're not getting it. Uh, thrills, lack of, lack of thrills. The bad guys are pretty stupid at times. It's laughable at times. Again, just the beginning, the no sweat, no sweat. <laughs> or at the end when you see the tapes and you see the actual sub subliminal message of no, no, and these, like, again, 70s animation on the side of this face of the person they want you not to vote for, and then more animation of this person they want you to vote for. And yes, yes. I'm like, is it Daniel Bryan? Yes, yes. More like, no, no, fuck this. It's a boring as fucking movie. And but I know there's gonna be 50 movies, 50 times worse coming up. So it's not. I can't rant and rave too much because there's a lot of energy to save up for the future. But yeah, agency. Looker in 1981 did this much better. They Live, of course. I mean, 
that's how you do sublim subliminal messages the best. I mean, just the dollar that says, this is your God. That one thing is more creative than anything in this movie. Uh, it, I don't repeat myself. Lee Majors, Robert Mitchum, they do the best they can. But when you have a life, lifeless, dull, slow-paced movie where barely anything happens, and it's a mystery that you can pretty much figure out right from the get-go, but it takes the characters like too long to figure out. It's just not much of a movie. But anyway, just that's just my thoughts on agency. Thanks for watching. Take care and stay tuned for my next review, which is going to be the classic airplane. See you later. No sweat, no sweat, no sweat, no sweat, no sweat.